we pray that this service will be a blessing to each of us in Jesus' name. Amen. So let's we open up in prayer in the name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for who you are. We thank you, Father, for everything that you have done, continue to do in each of our lives. We thank you, Lord God, that you continue to lead your people, direct your people. And we thank you, Lord God, that you brought your people this morning to the service. And those who is watching this broadcast, we thank you, Father, for everyone who is here and those who is watching. And Father, we thank you, Lord God, that there is no distance in the spirit, that you are touch your people this morning in the name of Jesus. And Father, as Pastor Larry come and ministering to each of us, Father, through your word, Father, we thank you, Lord God, that we have ears to hear and a heart to receive what the Spirit of God has been saying to us have you way holy spirit in this place in jesus name amen amen and amen well hallelujah god is so good he is faithful amen well we have a minister eric back from his vacation amen so um so let's we go in into the praise and worship and we Worship the Lord. Let's worship the Lord this morning in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, it's great to be back. I don't know that it's great to be back at 108, but uh, I think that's what the temperature is supposed to be here today. I was up in Washington on the on the Puget Sound, so I think our scorching hot heat wave was the day that it hit 90. Really? But most. Most of the time that I was up there, we were lucky to hit the mid-80s. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Well, welcome to New Life in Christ Jesus Church. We're going to enter into worship and praise. The Bible says that they worship the Lord in, with all of their hearts. And sometimes that was whirling and dancing and screaming and shouting and twisting and turning. Sometimes that's on your face before the Lord. You are welcome to worship any way that the Bible teaches that uh, the Spirit of God moves on you to do. You're welcome to stand or sit or whatever you'd like to do, but we're going to start out a little upbeat this morning. I gave you some song sheets. And I ran out of tape this morning, so I'm not sure they're in the right order because I just got to throw them on the copy machine. And we'll start out with We Give Thanks.
Without you, there's no freedom. Without you, there's no deliverance. Without you, there's only bondage. So we thank you. You are our deliverer. You are our healer. You are our strength. And we thank you. And we bless you today in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. God bless you. you may be seated. In the presence of the Lord. Welcome to New Life in Christ Jesus Church, where Jesus Christ is glorified. Amen. Uh, it's such an honor to have you guys with us today and you done with us by the internet. Amen. It's uh, a privilege. Thank I'm, I'm thankful that the musician's back off the vacation. <laughs> he, but he told me he had a wonderful time at home uh, uh, with his family. Uh, doing all the chores that they couldn't get nobody else to do. <laughs> well, they didn't want the one to do it. They wanted the brother to do it. They didn't want the son to do it. The mother wanted the son to do it, and the sister wanted the brother to do it. Amen. So I can understand that. I can understand it. Family always won't. You know how it is. Amen. Amen. It's a blessing. It is a blessing. Amen. Glory to God. But anyway, I thank God for all of you that come out this morning to be with us in the service, and I believe that we're in for a real good time today. I believe God is going to speak to our hearts. Amen. And I believe that uh, he's encouraging us. You see, when, when, when the enemy comes in like a flood, the Holy Spirit raises up a standard. And I've been, boy, you wouldn't be surprised the things I've gone through this week alone. Amen. Just this week, the, the, the pressure and the, and the, the, the uh, attacks. Amen. But you know what? Through it all, I count it all joy. Amen. Amen. I count it all joy because I'm still here. Yes, Amen. Sir. I'm still here. Yes, and what the devil's meant for evil, God is turning it around for his glory. Amen. Amen. So he's going to be glorified in this. And I thank God for you that, uh, you know, you, you guys are you're faithful. Look like everybody took a vacation for a little while, except me. <laughs> you know what, though? I'm glad that you guys didn't stay gone. <laughs> I 
I'm glad you 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 realize why you come back. Amen. And so we're going to go ahead and get started in our message for today. Because I believe that God wants to speak to our hearts. And I believe he wants to say some things that's going to help us to see ourselves as he sees us. You know, there are so many people that are in the church today, but yet still their, their lives is not lining up with God. Amen. My wife and I, we talk about that a lot. She, even, you know, since I've been preaching this message, I mean, I've been picked on left and right. I, I mean, everything that I do wrong, I'll tell you what, it's under, it's under scrutinized presence of God. Amen. And my wife too. Amen. She, 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 she looks at me and she said, now look at you. You know, she points out my wrongs, my, my errors. She don't hesitate neither. <laughs> she don't hesitate. Amen. But that's the same way, but that's the same way God does. He looks at us, even though he don't, even though he, he don't, he don't point his finger at you, he don't, he don't tell you exactly what you're doing. Amen. But he knows that you know what you're doing. That's the whole point. He knows that you know what you're doing. Amen. And so when you know that you know what you're doing is wrong, that when we that's when it is considered as what? Sin. sin, not only sin. You know, if you you drive down the road doing 25 miles per hour in a 55 and doing 55 miles per hour in a 25 mile per hour zone or in a 55 miles per hour, what you call that? Speeding. It's breaking the law. Speeding. Breaking the law. The Bible calls it transgression. You know to do right, but you're doing just the opposite. The Bible calls it what? Transgression. Amen. So when we know that we see how many how many you know people right now, they live in they, they they go to church every time the doors open, but you if you watch their life, they're still doing a lot of things that they know not to do, but they do it anyway. Why? Because they've been accustomed to doing it that way. All their life they grew up doing it that way. And they went to church, and no one told them it was wrong, so they still doing it that way, even though in back of their in, in in back of their conscience, and by reading the word of God, you know that it's wrong in a way, but still you do it. But the Bible also said, not everyone that stands before me and say, Lord, Lord, will enter to the kingdom of heaven. So we so we have to we have to examine our hearts. We have to understand where we are in God, so so that when we so when we make mistakes, we can say, "Oh my God, I believe that's wrong." You know, that's that's this is not this is this is not right. And that what my wife tells me. She said, "That's not right." <laughs> and I said, "Okay, okay." I don't always say okay because sometimes it makes me upset. <laughs> Amen. But the thing about it, the thing about it, right is right and wrong is wrong. And that's the way God sees it. That's the way God sees it. And a lot of us are expecting to go to, you know, to, to make heaven our home, but we want to live like hell in the earth. Amen. Just like when I tell people to put their phones away and don't use them in the church, they act like I don't, they like they don't, they don't, they don't understand what I'm saying. You know, and uh, that applies to my family too, as well as everybody else. I didn't write Lizzo. <laughs> Thank you, love. I appreciate that. Amen. So now, we're dealing with this message, and I believe that God is dealing with our hearts through this message because ever since I've been dealing with this message, I have experienced a lot of a lot of things that uh, I normally didn't go through. I like this thing right here. I got room to sit my paper and everything. Nice. <laughs> That's good. Yeah, it does. It don't it? Yeah, it, it really does. It does. This is this is my donation to the church. Amen. This is an equal construction donation to Larry Bergen Ministries. Amen. Glory to God. And uh, and I and I like it. I like it. But anyway, we're still dealing with the message of what. Sin does what? Separate. Separates us from God. Sin separates us from God. Amen. Now, when we deal with this message, when as we're dealing with this message, God is dealing with our hearts because I tried to quit this message a while back, a, a three, about three, four weeks ago, and God told me no. Amen. God told me no. And I tell you that when God said no, I kind of, I kind of perked up a little bit because I, I was wondering why was he saying no, amen, because I was 
really wanted to go to some another message. Amen. I was I was wanting to go to another message, but God said no, so I had to yield to His purpose, yield to His plan. Amen. And to do what He want me to do, because if I did what I want to do, I'd be talking about something else right now. And I I want I want to talk about the rapture. I want to talk about going to heaven. But we got to make people got to get people ready to go to heaven first. Are y'all ready to go to heaven? Amen. Which one y'all ready to go? I'm gonna take a load up tomorrow. <laughs> oh, I'm not doing that. <laughs> Amen. I'm not gonna do that. So I take that back. Lord, forgive me. <laughs> see that? See that? I know tra that's a, that was a transgression. I know to do right now. I said something wrong. <laughs> see, that's what God is telling us. We know right from wrong, but yet still we choose a lot of time to do just the opposite. And God told us that the wages of sin is death. The penalty of sin is death. Amen. And so when I start dealing with a transgression, see, a transgression is an act that goes against the law. Or you might say it goes against God. Transgression is a <clears throat> it's knowing the right thing to do, but yet considered to do just the opposite. A lot of people go to church on Sunday morning and they know the right thing to do, even in church, but yet, yet they choose to do just the opposite. Even in relationships, you know the right way to carry to carry to carry yourself, but yet you choose to do just the opposite. You know the power of walking in love would, would release healing in the life of people around you, but you but you choose to be angry and bitter, which releases uh, animosity, it causes people not to want to be around you. You see, when we understand what God is saying to us, we'll, we'll also see that for all have sinned. We know that none of us is perfect. None of us is, is all together righteous because God said there's none righteous, no, not one. But yet that doesn't stop us from striving to be righteous. That doesn't stop us from wanting to be what God said that we are. We can be whatever we want to be. We just have to put our hearts to it. Because God said all things are possible to him that believe. If I want to live, if I want to live a life totally separated from the world, then that don't mean that I can't. Because I can. Now, I'm not going to say it's going to be easy, but I can say that God is able to bring me to a place where he will be seen in my life in a very vis vis visible way. And I believe that's what he's doing. He's bringing us into a position where we will be vessels of honor. And this is why this message is so important that God wants us to be able to look at our lives and, and point fingers in ourselves at the areas of our life where we are wrong. Instead of, instead of letting people point fingers at you, God wants you to point fingers at yourself. Because the moment you start pointing fingers at yourself, then you're going to begin to judge yourself. God said, you judge yourself, you be not judged by the world. And it was in Corinthians chapter 11. If we would judge ourselves, we would not be judged. See, this is what God wants us to do. God wants us to look at our lives. He wants us to examine our hearts. He wants us to examine our motives. He wants us to examine everything that we do. He even wants us to examine our mindset. Because a lot of your, your, your tax is not coming against your body. Your tax is coming against your mind. He began to put thoughts in your mind, begin to put images in your mind, begin to put uh, uh, pe uh, pictures in your mind of, of people. Then all of a sudden, you, 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 got to, you got to bring every thought into subjection to the Holy Ghost and into captivity. And you got to begin to cast down those imaginations and those thoughts that exalt itself against the knowledge of God. Because if you don't, those thoughts is going to cause you to act on 
what you're thinking. Y'all know what I'm talking about, right? This is not something new to us because we've been dealing with this message for a while. But the thing about it, that that's a, that, that's that's some parts of this is still, still had not registered in our heart, and this is the part that God wants us to continue to to touch. Because you see, we think that we can go to church, we can come back home, we can do whatever we want to do, and and and, and, and it's okay. God says, "I see everything that you do. I hear everything that you say." I'm with you everywhere you go. How can it be hid from me? Because he said he'll never leave you nor forsake you. He's with you always. Amen. So God is showing us that in his word, God is showing us in his word that he has given us a place. Amen. That we can understand. We have given us a place that when we begin to understand. Amen. For we was purchased. God purchased us. He purchased us from our sin. He purchased us from our transgressions. He purchased us from our iniquity. And he gave us in the process his righteousness. He gave us in the process his, his deity to walk upright before him. To stand in the presence of Almighty God. And now that's is something that we need to, just to see ourselves. We need to see ourselves as God sees us. And the Bible tells us in 1 John chapter 3, verse number 4. It said, Whosoever committed sin transgresseth also the law. In other words, you're breaking God's law. At 1 John 3, 4, Whosoever committed sin transgresseth also the law. For sin is the transgression of the law. Amen? And then and if you look at that, then you look at Romans chapter 6, verse number 26, verse number 23, it says, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. When we understand what God is saying to us, oh my God, you know, because, because when you, the moment you make a decision that you want more of God, the moment you say, God, I understand that I'm making, I'm making, I'm making mistakes in my life. God, I repent of all my mistakes. I repent of all my sin. God, I need more strength. I need more of you in my heart. I need more of you, God. I, can, I, I, I can't do it by myself. I need more of you. And all of a sudden, God began to turn up the... He began to... to, begin to uh, you begin to feel his presence more and more and more and more. Then all of a sudden, you begin to sense the attacks more and more and more too. Why? Because the devil don't want to let you go. He wants to control. He wants to keep control of your heart, your and it's do that. He does it through your mindset. He does it through your mindset. That's why it's so important we understand what God is saying to us. Amen. When I look at when I look at this, I say, "Oh God, that's so awesome." But now let's look at John chapter three and verse number sixteen. John chapter three, verse number sixteen. For God so loved the world that He gave his only begotten son that whosoever believed in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Amen. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world but that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned but he that believeth not is condemned already because he had not believed in the only begotten son of God. Amen. See God is, all, God is not going to condemn you. God is not here. Jesus didn't come to condemn you. Jesus came to set you free. Your freedom is, is, is connected to Jesus. Your freedom is not connected to your, to your problem. Your problem is connected to Satan because he's the one, is the author and the finisher. He's the author of sin. But when you yield from the, when you yield from your problem and start trusting in God, Jesus Christ become alive on the inside of you when you acknowledge him, Lord Jesus, I, I believe that you came and died for my sin. And, and I confess my sin right now. Forgive me, Lord. 
Forgive me, Lord, and come into my heart. Then all of a sudden, you've been translated from an Adamic nature to the nature of God. The kingdom of God comes and takes its residence within you. And now you can tell uh, ha, that God is on the move. Mm, ha, and now my life mm, ha, is ready to go forth. Mm, ha, I'm ready to walk the rock. Mm, ha, I'm ready to talk the talk. Mm, ha, yeah. <laughs> Glory to God. See, see, when you understand who you are, you you don't you you know you you can stay in the in the in the scope of your of your uh, calling and you can still bring joy to a heart. I've never been a hooper. I've been, a, I've, I've raised something around them. I used to just do it just for the kid. When I was a, before I, before I was called a priest, I used to do it just for kidding, you know. But when I was called a priest, I, I, I just, it just wasn't in me to do it. But I can do it. I don't like it. I can do it. <laughs> Amen. But the thing about it, God has given us, God is, God is in, it is a, it is a, it is a, when we come to God, we must realize what he does. God doesn't only atone for our sin. Amen. He doesn't only atone for our sin. Amen. He takes away our iniquity. He doesn't only atone for our sin. He takes away our iniquity. Let me show you that in the book of Isaiah chapter 6. Isaiah chapter 6. That's not even in my notes for today. It just came up in my spirit. Amen. Because I've talked about this before. Amen. But notice what it said right in chapter 6. Amen. And verse, let's just start, let's just start reading verse, verse number. Mm -hmm. Okay, I see it right there, but let's I want let's just start, let's just start reading verse number one through six. One through eight, I mean. That's a that's a good place to start. Because when God gave me this, when, this was my third sermon that God gave me, Isaiah chapter 6, this section of scripture. My third sermon that I ever preached. Amen. In the year the king was of that, I saw also the Lord sit up on the throne, high and lifted up, and the train filled the temple. Above it stood the surfing. Each one had six wings, with twin he covered his feet, face. With twin he covered his feet, and with twin he did fly. And one cried unto the other and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. See, we were saying, Holy, holy, holy. And then what we were saying this morning? Because God is holy. Amen. God is holy. It's the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. Verse 4. And the post of the door moved at the voice of him that cried and said, And the post, and the post of the door moved at the voice of of him that cried, and the house was filled with smoke. Then said I, Woe is me. Here it is, right here, folks. Woe is me, for I am undone. You see, right here, right here, we see the seraphim is about to be released to them that are making a, a, a true commitment to God to drive out the sin, the iniquity that's in your life that's going to cause you to be able to stand before, oh shit, out of our kind, to stand before a holy God yeah. without sin conscious. Yeah. <laughs> Y'all, my God, that whole attitude just changed that fast. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. See, I told God, just, I, this is not even my, in my notes, but God just brought me here. Notice what it says right here now. Verse number, verse number, verse number five, it says, and then said I, woe is me, for I am undone. Because I am a man of unclean lips. In other words, I don't always tell the truth. I don't always speak the right things. I sometimes I say a word that I shouldn't say. Amen. Unclean lips. Amen. And I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. And you hang around people that do the same thing. Amen. This is the lifestyle that I grew up in. Amen. Amen. And I dwell in the midst of people of unclean lips. For mine eyes have seen the king, the Lord of hosts. Now, my eyes did see the king. My eyes have seen the king, the Lord of hosts. Uh, that's, no, that's no lie. I have. My eyes have seen. Look what it says, verse number six. Then flee one of the seraphims unto me, having what? A live coal in his hand. Having a live coal in his hand, which he had taken with the tongues from the altar. Oh, my God. 
And he laid it upon my mouth and said, Lo, this has touched thy lips and thine iniquity. Here it is right here. Thine iniquity is what? Is taken away. And thy sin purged. See, when you get sincere with God, God releases the surfing, the one we're talking about right here. He releases the surfing, and that surfing, he's going to go looking for you. There's darkness all around you. I mean, you 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 just engulfed in darkness, but all of a sudden, you look way out to the right. There's a bright light shining like a, like, like a spotlight just searching. You ever seen in the dark and then the police come and shine that spotlight off their car? I've seen it too. I, and, and I'm glad they never were looking at me while they were doing it. <laughs> but I've seen it. <laughs> Amen. But that light is shining real bright. Way back out from a distance. Then it just keep going back and forth. See, the eye of God is going back and forth throughout the heavens, seeking whom he can show himself strong through. He's looking for that one. He's looking for that woman, that man that will say, God, 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 I need more of you. God, I, I surrender my whole life. I lay my life down. God, let there be none of me but all of you. Then all of a sudden, that seraphine come and shine right upon you. That begin to purge you. It begin to purify you. It begin to take away your sin, your iniquity. All of a sudden, it's gone. It's gone. Amen. Now, all of a sudden, your conversation, it become more, more full of love. Your conversation become more of compassion. Your conversation become more like God. Why? Because your iniquities has been taken away and your sin has been purged and now you are walking in the light of who he is. He's taken all that you had and he's given you all that he is. Come on now. Y'all don't understand what I'm saying. God God is taking away our iniquity and our sin is purged. Amen. Now, get this. Now you're ready to minister. You're ready to go to the people of the land and you're ready to demonstrate the kingdom. Mm. Woo! Glory to God. Glory to God. Because because, because, because he said in verse number six, he said, Then flee one of the servants unto me, having a live coal in his hand, which he had taken with the tongue from the altar. And he laid it upon my mouth and said, Lo, this hath touched my, my lips, and thine iniquity is taken away, and thy sin purged. Now listen to what he said in verse number eight. Also I heard him, I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? See, now you're ready to be sent. You're not just one that's going to step out and say, well, I'm going to go do this for the Lord. I'm going to do this. No, you're going to, you're going to, you're going to either be sent or you're going to sit down. Because if you, if, you, if you go on your own, you're not going to accomplish nothing. But if you are sent, and he's going to walk with you, then he's going to, he's going to confirm the word with signs, wonders, and miracles. Amen. That's why it's so important that we that we understand what God is telling us. That's why He wants our sins purged. He wants our He wants our sin. He wants our iniquity purged and our and our, and our sins. He want He want to blot it out. Why? Because see, God want to He want to show forth His nature in the earth today. He wants to show forth His character in the earth today. He wants you to be the light that He created you to be today in this dark world. Because darkness is coming on the world even stronger than you have seen it come, and it's coming at a strong pace. And I'm and I'm seeing it coming, and I'm saying, "Oh God, what a great move of Your Spirit!" And God speaks back to me and said, "That's not a move of My Spirit. This is a move of darkness." And He said, "Warn My people, for the end of all things is at hand." And I said, "Oh God, why are you telling me this?" But it happened. And I began.
began and, and, and I began to try to talk about it every once in a while and, and, and nothing become of it. But now he don't let me forgive it. He won't let he won't let me forget about it now. Why? Because now is the time. Now is the season. Now is the time that God wants to show himself strong. Now is the time that God wants to reveal his glory. Now is the time that God wants the people to begin to see themselves as standing as children of the most high God and not just uh, not just children. <clears throat> it's time we start seeing ourselves the way God sees us. Walking in the strength of God. Amen. The Bible tells us in the book of Ephesians chapter 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 1, chapter 2, I mean. <clears throat> Ephesians chapter 2. He said, and you had he quickened. See, when you, when you in, 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 in Isaiah, you that's when that, that surfing came, he quickened your spirit. He quickened your spirit. What how did he quicken your spirit? He 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 caused your iniquity to be pushed away and your sins were purged. He quickened your spirit. He caused you to come alive when that hot cold touched your lips. He caused you to come alive in Christ Jesus. Amen. In God. Amen. Glory to God. And then Isaiah. In Ephesians, I mean, Ephesians chapter, chapter 2, verse number 1 said, Then, and, and he said, and, and, and you had he quickened, who were dead in trespasses and sin, wherein in time past ye walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air. See, this is the way we were before we acknowledged Jesus Christ. This is the way we were before we were purged from our iniquity and our sin. We walked as the churches of the world. This was our lifestyle. This is why God is saying they are not ready for you to stop preaching that message because they are still dealing with issues in their lives and in their heart until they come to the grip and understand that the time is running out and that true repentance is available. God said, preach it. And I said, okay, God, I, 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 as long as you want me to do it, I'll preach it. Amen. And I know that it's not a popular message, but I got to do what God said. And the Spirit... That, that spirit had now worked work in the church of disobedience, among whom also we all had our conversation in time past. See, this is our lifestyle. This was our lifestyle. The lust of the flesh, fulfilling desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature churches of wrath, amen, even as others. This is what we did, amen. But God, verse number six, are y'all there? But God, who is rich in mercy for his great love, wherewith he loved us. I like this part right here. Even when we were what? Dead in sin. Even when we were dead in sin, had quickened us together with Christ. By grace you are saved. And had raised, by grace you are saved. And, again, and, and had raised what? Us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. All oh, God is doing, God is wanting us to see ourselves the way he sees us. See, if we don't see ourselves raised up with him, we're going to continue to walk in this earth as people without knowledge of who we really are. But the moment we begin to see ourselves raised up with him, we're going to begin to see ourselves differently than the world, than we see ourselves in the world. The world going to look at us, they're going to see us one way, but we're going to see ourselves in the kingdom of God. We're going to see ourselves walking in the light. We're going to see ourselves walking in forgiveness of our sin. The moment you begin to see yourself walking in forgiveness of your sin, that's the moment you're going to begin to rise up to the level that God is able to do something in your life. Because as long as you're still so focused on your shortcomings, you're still so focused on your sin, you'll never rise up to that next level because you're more conscious on sin than on God. You're more sin conscious than you are God conscious. And this is why it's so important that we allow the surfing to come and put that hot coal on our lips, purge us of our iniquity, and cause our sin to be blotted out. Because once that sin is blotted out, you're going to stand before God. You're going to stand before a holy God. And he's going to look at you, and he's going to, he's going to, he's going to wrap his arms around you, and he's going to say, my son was lost. But now he's found. He was dead, but now he's alive again. Amen. We are in a good place right now. God has given us the antidote to our problem. And that antidote it's the word of life. The word of life. 
Corinthians. First Corinthians chapter 15, verse number one says, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preach unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you first of all that which also that which I also did receive. How that Christ died, notice what he said now, how that Christ died for our what? For our sins according to the scripture and that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scripture. What happened when he rose again? He rose up and he led captivity captive. Amen. He led captivity captive. He, he went in the belly of hell in, in Colossians chapter 2. And he took Satan and he, he grabbed him. He took the key from, from the grave and the stain out of death. And he grabbed Satan and drug him up and down hell in front of all of his demons and his co-hosts. And he made a show of him openly. Tramping over him in it. And then he rose again declaring, All power, both in heaven and earth, is in my hand. Then he said, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth and not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe in my name. Shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up servants. And if they drink any devil thing, they shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. And these... And this is what God is saying to us today, folks. Yeah. This is what God is saying to us today. God is giving us the He's given us the 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 the, 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 the He's given us the, the, the word to go. To go. Oh hallelujah. Yeah. Are we willing to go? He's saying go. My God, my God, my God. Did y'all get that? And then in Romans chapter 1, verse number 16 says, Because oh, see, this, this really applied to you. It applied to me. You cannot be ashamed of who you are. You got to understand, when you take this to heart, and you take the responsibilities that God I'll do what you ask me to do, no matter what it costs. I'll do it. Now you got you got you got to stand up. Now you got to go forward. Look what it said in Romans chapter one, verse number sixteen. For I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto what salvation, salvation to everyone that believe it. To the Jew first, and also to the Greek. See, that's why it's so important we preach. Stay with the gospel because it's the gospel that's going to bring the change in the heart of man. It's the gospel that's going to bring deliverance. It's the gospel that's going to bring healing. It's the gospel that's going to set the captives free. It's not what we think. It's not what we how we live our lives every day. It's the gospel. It's the gospel. Amen. It's the gospel. Glory to God. And then it says in verse... And then it says right here in Romans chapter 3 and verse number 24, for being, Romans chapter 3, verse number 24, being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. See, we, see, we, we, we've been, we've been, we've been justified freely by faith. That's why we that's why we ought to walk by faith and not by sight. That's why we ought to hold fast to the confession of our faith and not allow our mind to be double-minded or be wavering minded. God has given us an opportunity to be the light of the world. Amen. To be the light of the world. And Romans chapter 5. And it reads. Are y'all still with me? My time is about up, but I've got to, I've got to get this. Romans chapter 5, start reading verse number 1. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God. 
through our Lord Jesus Christ. See, you're not going to have peace outside of God. But with God, you got peace. Verse number two. By whom also we, we have access by faith unto his grace, wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. And not only and not only so, but we glory in tribulation also, knowing that tribulation worketh what? Patient. And patient experience. And experience hope. And hope make it not a shame. Hope make it not a shame. Because the love of God is shared abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. For when we were yet without strength in when we were yet without strength in due time, Christ did what? He died for us. He died for who? The ungodly. He died for us, the ungodly. Because we was ungodly. Remember? Before Christ, we was unsaved. Yeah. We was ungodly. And he died for us. Amen. Verse number 7 says, verse number 7, this is Romans chapter 5, verse number 7 now. But God commended his love toward us in that while we were what? Yet sinners. Christ did what? He died for us. Yes. Amen. While we were yet sinners. He died for us. Amen. Much more than being now justified by his blood. We should be saved from wrath through him. Amen. Should be saved from wrath through him. I'm going to read one more, one more scripture here. Glory to God. For if, for if then, for if when we were enemies, we were cons. Con what is that word? Reconcile. Are you sure? God wants to reconcile us to himself. Yes. For when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son. Much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. By his life. This is how important it's so this is how it's so this is why it's so important that we understand why God didn't want me to stop this message when I wanted to stop. Because there's a lot that I had never I had never touched. I'm I'm talking about things right now that I just that I just started to learn, that I started to read, and I just started to study, and all of a sudden it's be, it, it, it began to minister to my heart. And I said, Oh God, now I see why you didn't want me to stop. Because I could preach all year just on this subject and, and never lose and, and because and never miss a beat. This is a message that the world needs to hear, but the poor people won't preach it. That's why we can't be ashamed. That's why we can't be afraid. That's why we have to stand firm on what God has given us. And this is why the attacks come so much. This is why the this is why the, everyone is trying to pick at you. This is why everyone is 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 is, is working overtime trying to cause you to make mistakes or say something you don't have no business saying or do something you don't have no business doing because they want to be able to point their finger at you. Uh oh. Y'all know what that means. That means my time is up. I'm going to put my finger. <laughs> amen, 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 amen. But, but, but tell me the truth. Today, God is speaking to our hearts. He's definitely speaking to mine. I don't know about you. <laughs> The Bible tells us in 2 Corinthians t uh, 10 and 3, he said, though we walk in the flesh, we do not walk after the flesh. Our flesh is working overtime trying to bring us into subjection to the will of the world. Yes. Though we walk in flesh, we do not walk after the flesh. 
For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of stronghold. We have to stand firm on the word of God if we're going to stand, if we're going to take this nation back for the kingdom of God. Amen. The politicians are working overtime, establishing uh, laws that will bring you into bondage. And if you're not praying, if you're not seeking the face of God, then you're going to be brought into bondage. And you're going to, and you're going to be subject to their ungodly laws. That's why we got to be like Daniel. We got to be like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Yes. We have to we, we have to stand firm on God' decree and not man's decree. Amen. Daniel knew that the writing had been signed, but he still went and prayed. He kneeled down as he did three times a day, and he prayed. He knew he was going to be caught, but he prayed. Why? Because he would not yield. To the ungodly law that was passed against the God that he served. Amen. Right. And this is what God is looking at the church for. This is why preaching on sin is so important. This is why preaching on the kingdom of God is so important. Because it's time for the church to become the kingdom of God. That God called it to be. That God set inside of them. You don't have to. You don't, I know it's going it's to it, 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 it's cause a little trouble. It's going to cause a little trouble in, 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 in the days to come. But your life is at stake. Your eternity is at hand. You stop doing what God wants you to do. You start living the way the world wants you to live. You're going to miss out on God's purpose and God's plan for your life. You're going to wind up in change in, in chains engulfed in fire and brimstone God I knew the truth but I, oh God give me another chance it's going to be too late God send Lazarus let him tip let him dip the tip of his finger into the, into the water and come and place it upon my lips for I'm tormented in these flames it'll be too late Today is the day of salvation. Today is the day of deliverance. Today is the day that we acknowledge Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. We need to make a decision. We need to begin to examine our hearts. We need to ask God to forgive us. I don't know about you, but I'm, I know that God is God is not a man that he should lie. Nor the son of man that he should repent. The warnings that God has given us in his word, he's not going to take them back because we are not ready. He's given us an opportunity to make it right. Each and every one of us. We walk around thinking that we all, we, we think we got it, we all got the guilt and everything. But if we really look at our hearts the way God sees our hearts, you know that there's none righteous. You're not so holy that you can point your finger at someone else. You're not so righteous that you can, can take matters in your own hand and condemn someone else. There's none righteous. No, not one. As but one man sinned into the world, so death by sin, the Bible says, so death passed upon all men. For all have sinned. But God given us an escape. He gives us a way to escape. And he says in Romans chapter 10, verse number 9, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, he said, thou shalt be saved. Verse number 10 says, with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. 
Verse number 13 says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Hallelujah. See, God knows exactly where we, where we are. And he's given us He's given us an opportunity to make it right. I'm talking to someone today. You may be with me by the internet right now. You may be watching me by television. You may be listening by the radio. But I'm talking to you by the Spirit of God right now. You may even be a politician. And you know that your heart is not right with God. And you're trying to get people to vote for you. You're trying to, you're trying to lure people. by You're trying to play like you're a Christian. But you're living a double life. And God is going to deal with your heart too. He's telling you to repent. He's calling you to repent. And if you truly repent, everything that you touch is going to begin to prosper. Amen. Everything that you put your hands to, God is going to make it good. Why? Because you, you, you understood what he said to you. You repented and you yielded your heart to do his will. And now God is going to use you for his glory. Yeah, you're a politician. Yeah, I'm talking to you. God is talking to you. Stop being a deceiver. And turn your heart toward God. And watch and see what God will do for you. In you and through you. Father, I thank you for this word today. I thank you, Lord God, that your word would not fall to the ground, but it would accomplish that would please us you. And every heart that it was meant to hear, Father, every heart that it was meant to touch, God, it will go forth. They will hear it and they will experience it. And God, you will touch their lives and you will transform their hearts. I thank you for it now in Jesus' name. Now, if you've never made Jesus Christ Lord of your life, I'm going to give you an opportunity right now. Hallelujah. This is this is something that I don't have no control over. This is God all the way, folks. This is God all the way. This message is totally God. He loved you so much that he kept me on this message so that you would have an opportunity to hear it. that he would have the opportunity to speak to your heart once again. And now, hear the word of the Lord. Repent and turn from your wicked ways. Repent and turn from your wicked ways. Say this prayer with me today. If you're ready to repent, if you're ready for God to forgive you of your sin, if you know that this is God speaking to your heart, don't say it because I'm asking you to. Say it because you mean business with God. Say this with me. Say, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus I, repent of my sin. I repent of my sin. Forgive me, Lord. Forgive me, Lord. Come, into my heart. Come into my heart. Create in me a right, spirit. In my, in my right spirit. And renew in me a clean heart. Jesus I, believe Jesus, I believe that you are the Son of God, that you are the Son of God, and that you died for my sin. And you died for my sin. Today I confess my sin. Today I confess my sin. And I ask you to be the Lord of my life. And I ask you to be the Lord of my life. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father, for saving me. For saving. Me. Amen. You know, I was at, I was in uh, ne Nepal. Ne what is this? Is it called Nepal? Napa. Napa. Yeah. I was in Napa last week and I was out there behind the store putting a fence up and the people across the fence, they looked over the fence, the wooden fence, they looked over the fence, they saw what I was doing. They said, we've been waiting for 20 years for this to happen. This old man, he said, we've been waiting for 20 years for this to happen. Then he went back and told his wife what was going on. His wife come down the alley <laughs> and come around and started talking to me. She shouldn't have did that. <laughs> oh my God she walked away crying she walked away full of joy she walked away yeah. saying thank you Jesus it was meant for me to come back here today she came back there and got saved <laughs> and then she went back around to the house and then the man that came over the fence talked to me earlier 
he come back over the fence again. This time he brought a love offering. A bag full of vegetables, fresh vegetables right out of the garden. He went out, he went out the garden picking them just for me. And he said, he said, thank you for what you did to my wife. Thank you. And I said, are you ready to? He said, yes, I am. <laughs> he said, yes, I am. And I led him to the Lord right there on the spot too. And, 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 and he was just crying like a baby. Just crying like a baby. Everywhere I go, I'm leading people to the Lord lately. You know why? Because the kingdom of God is on the inside of me. And this message is, is, is causing me to, is causing me to, 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 to walk in this calling. God wants to do the same thing for you. Amen. I just had to share that with you because everywhere I, lately I've been I've been doing a, I've been ministering to a lot of people and every time I every time I talk to them I, I I lead them to the Lord. Amen. Glory to God. Well, it's time for us to give up, prepare for our offering for today. Amen. It's time to prepare for our offering for today. Those of you that know who I am on the internet, don't forget we are also preparing for our missionary. Those of you that are going to be sowing a seed for our missionary trip, amen, make sure you write on your on your envelope, on your check, those that are sending in through the mail, just write mission on there. Mission on there. Amen. And we'll know where it's going. We'll know where it's going. Amen. But you that are, if it's not a tithe, it's going to go for mission anyway, so don't worry about it. Amen. It's going to go for mission anyway, because we believe in God for 100% tithers, and we're believing God for the mission trip to be financially secured. We believe that every need is met according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. So when you give your seed today, give your seed and make it a point that is for souls. Not just sowing a seed, but look at the harvest that that seed is going to touch. Look at the souls that's going to be reached because of that seed. And look at the hearts that's going to be changed and transformed from darkness to light because of that seed. And just think, you was not able to go, but you planted a seed, and that seed went, and that seed caused the a crop to be produced on your behalf. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray, Father, that you would touch every heart, every soul under the sound of my voice, that you would call, that you would speak to their hearts, and as they open up their, their heart, Father, that they will hear what the Spirit of God is saying to them concerning the souls the harvest season that we are in. And God, you're going to speak to their heart. They're going to sow a particular seed. And they, as they plant this seed, God, God, we'll be able to go and reap this harvest, Father, without wondering, do we have enough? Or will we be able to accomplish all the things that we want to accomplish while we were there? Will we be able to pay for the freedom of a family out of, out of slavery this time? God, we want to be able to do that. We want to do that. The last time we went, we, we was able to pray. We were able to, to get two families free from slavery. Two families free from slavery. And I believe, Father, that you want to do it again. And this is why, Father, we ask for a certain amount to come in so we can help godly families that have been brought into slavery be set free their bond will be paid and they'll be set free I thank you for it Father in Jesus name oh hallelujah now Father I bless every seed I bless every seed that has been sown today I bless every gift that has been given today every tithe that's been given today, Father. You said that you rebuke the devour for their sake. Father, I thank you for those that, that give their tithes online, Father. I thank you for those, God, that are giving their seed online. Father, you're going to cause every need to be met because you said you would. I believe it, and that settles it. 
right there, Father, you said when we give, it shall be given to us, good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, shall men give it to our bosom. You said you rebuke the devourer for our sake, and you will cause our ground to give forth the fruit in its season. Father, we believe that season is here. And we thank you. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Amen. Glory to God. Those of you that need prayer right now, I'll pray for you. Those of you that need prayer right now, I'll pray for you. Everybody happy? Good. You want me to pray for you? Sure. Well, come on, I'll pray for you. Anybody else? Thank you, Lord Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for my brother. Father, I pray for my brother. I apply the blood from the crown of his head to the sole of his feet. Oh, Father, breathe upon him, Father. Breathe upon him, Father. Let the glory, Father, rest upon him. Let the word penetrate his heart, God. And Father, let him begin to see himself as you see him. Father, may he begin to walk in the spirit like never before. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Father, heal every wound of his heart. Every wound of his heart. Everything that the devil afflicted upon him, Father, let it be healed now in Jesus' name. And God, let him walk in the truth. Let him walk in the truth of your word. May your word be come a living testimony in his heart. In Jesus. I shot down the I release that fire now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. There it is. There it is. Right now. There it is. There it is. Receive it. Receive it. Thank you, Father. Oh, yes. Thank you, Lord. 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 Now, Father, I give you praise. I give you praise, Lord. Let the fire of God, let the fire of God purge him. Purge him. Bring him to a place, Father, that he be no more himself. But he'll only see you in every area of his life. Penetrate every fiber of his being, Father, with your presence with the Persian fire of the Holy Ghost. Breathe upon him a freshness of your presence in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. There it is, there it is, there it is. There it is. Fire. 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 Glory, glory. Shout out to you. Shout out to you. Shout out to you. Shout out to you. Yes, Lord. 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 And Father, as he stands, I pray for his wife. Yes, Lord. I let, Father, I release the anointing. And I break every demonic assignment against his wife's health. I release the anointing, Father and the ministry angels to go for right now and begin to minister life, health, and healing over her body in the name of Jesus. Lord, I thank you for signs, wonders, and miracles accompanying this word. In Jesus' name, I call her free. I call her healed. I call her delivered in Jesus' name. May your name be glorified, Father. May your name be glorified. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. 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 Thank you, my God, Tiger of the fire is up here. The fire is here. The fire in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. 
I break every demonic assignment against his mind, his will, his emotion. Father, I release the anointing right now to purge him, to purge him of every dead work and make the kingdom of God manifest in his heart like never before. God, I release that anointing now in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Father, I thank you. I praise you. I praise you. Now, Father, touch his family. Touch his children. Minister to them. Bring them to a place of inner peace, inner healing. God, what the devil is meant for evil, turn it around, Lord, for your glory, in Jesus' name. Thank you for it, Father. Thank you for it, Father. Thank you for it, Father. Praise you, 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 Lord Jesus. Praise you, Lord Jesus. Praise you, Lord Jesus. Praise you, Lord Jesus. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, Father, I thank you for my brother. I thank you, Lord God, that your hand continues to rest most. In the name of Jesus, from the crowd here to the soles of his feet, Father, I release that anointing right now to live burden. Father, I cancel every word that's been spoken over his life. In the name of Jesus, that's been that's been a that's, been, that's called that's called grief. I break every word curse now in Jesus' name. Ah! Father, I release the anointing. I release your healing power from the crown of the head to the sole of your feet, to every joint, every disc, every vertebrae, every holy outshadow, every cell, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. I release your anointing, your healing power in Jesus. In the name of Jesus. And Lord may say, and Father, I pray for his family. I call them safe. I call them delivered. I call them free in Jesus' name. I call them free in Jesus' name. God, I bless this family. I bless this brother. I love this brother. And I bless him now in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Whoa, Satana. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Now, Father. Father. Let the peace of God be upon his heart. Let the peace of God be upon his heart. Let him not be moved by what it looked like around him, Father. But only by what your word says. I cancel every religious spirit that is trying to penetrate the barrier that you have placed around him. I break every curse that's been spoken over him in the name of Jesus. Father, I call you by Shabdiri Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Father, I give you praise. I give you glory in Jesus' name. There are people who are speaking over your life, and these are loved ones. That have been speaking over your life. They're trying to pull you back into their lifestyle. God said, I've delivered you. And I'm calling you to walk in the light that I've called you to walk in. So don't think that because you're going through these changes that you're going to lose confidence. You're going to lose your faith. God said, son, I'm with you. I'm walking with you. And I will not leave you nor forsake you. Just don't give up on me, said the Lord. And I won't give up on you. That make any sense to you, brother? Mm. Woo. My God. My God. Oh, I thank you, Father, for a fresh anointing from the crown of his head to the soles of his feet. Father, I apply the blood of Jesus over him right now. And I release, Father, the fire of God, the fresh fire. Father, to begin to cause him to see himself as you see him, Lord God. Every lie that is spoken over his life, Father, is cancer in the spiritual realm right now. In the name of Jesus, God, he will walk in the light of the word because you are the light. You are that light. 
You are that light. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. You are that light, God. Hallelujah. My God, the Holy Ghost is in this place today. Thank you, Lord. And Father, I release your healing and anointing over this. They're with us by the internet. And I pray, Father, that they come to the knowledge of who you are. That they will begin to examine their hearts in everything that they do. That they will see themselves, Father, walking free from every transgression, every iniquity, every sin. Because Jesus, you've already paid the price for it. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We love you guys. God bless you. Join us tonight. And I believe that you will be so glad you did because I have a special word tonight just for you. We love you. God bless you. Until then, be blessed. This is my soul, my Savior God to me. Thank you, Lord. Amen, amen, amen.